In case you're wondering, no, this is not a Draw My Life video. Well, I mean, it sort of is like a Draw My Life, except for it's not my life, it's my bus's life. <laughs> See, my family owned a short bus. Yeah, crazy a bus, huh? Well, the crazy thing is not that we had a bus, but the fact that we kept it for so many years. Well, two years. It's a lot in bus years. That's like 25 years. In hindsight, the bus was probably a bad idea. So let's start at the beginning. How did we come to owning a bus, you ask? Well, we saw it for sale on the side of the road and bought it the next day. Yay for forward thinking. I mean, of course we thought it would need some fixing up. It's a bus. We expected it to have a few problems. <laughs> a few problems. Maybe your vehicle has a few repairs on it, but my bus, it was a repair. A giant repair. <laughs> you couldn't find a single piece of that bus that hadn't been fixed or replaced in some way, oftentimes more than once. It was like everything had a time limit on it. You'd fix something just in time for something else to go. For the two plus years we had the bus, my brother kept necessary tools in the back, just in case it broke down. What was in our trunk, you ask? Okay, you might think this is insane, but would a crazy person keep a full toolbox, two spare batteries, and liquid fire in the back? Yeah, that's what I thought. Now, don't get me wrong, I love the bus. It was quirky, you know? I just had to be reminded of that every time the brakes gave out. So now that you have a brief background history of the bus, let's have some fun with a more detailed history of the many problems it afforded us. Well, the alternator was replaced three times, as well as the starter and the batteries, which is really fun because to get the bus started, especially in the winter, you had to use one of three methods. You'd either have to spray liquid fire into the air intake, jump start it with someone else's car, or jam a screwdriver somewhere under the hood. Great fun. <laughs> oh, and one time the front of the bus started smoking because the alternator blew up. My brother, you might know him as Dr. Mechanic, had to change a fuel filter in a random parking lot one time, and another time in a different parking lot because the muffler hanger snapped just as we were about to get on the highway to Ottawa. One time the bus just stopped in the middle of an intersection due to a fuel leak, and that same fuel sat on top of the engine as we drove home. A fun thing to note about the bus is that it was not waterproof. If you were driving in the rain or flurries, the driver would be wet. because you couldn't really heat up since the heater only worked about half the time. And that was in the summer. My mom fixed it once when she banged on this thing. I don't know, I think it's called the doghouse, I don't know. The bus really didn't like the winter. Not only did it refuse to start most days, but the rare times it did start, in order to get out of our driveway, we had to have two people sit on the wheel wells of the back tires while someone else just gunned it. Luckily, you could see the ground through the holes in the floor, so I never got car sick. Actually, funny story, one time the bus got stuck in the driveway as we were parking it, and it took four people and two planks of wood to get it unstuck. Oops. 
And surprisingly, after all this, we've only ever been in one accident with the bus. What? If you don't include hitting our neighbor's keypad. Hey! <laughs> there was a lady driving in the opposite direction of the bus when she turned suddenly into her driveway and got T-boned by the bus. Now the weird thing about this is that she told us she hadn't seen the bus. Like, Doug, how can you not see the bus? It's huge. So anyways, her car was completely totaled, undrivable. I don't even know if that's a word, but whatever. Meanwhile, the bus just drove away with the bumper pushed in slightly, which we later pulled back out with a chain. Good as new. Now, I saved the best for last. Let's talk about the time the bus's brakes gave out. I'll set the scene. <laughs> We're driving down a road in Richmond Hill. We're coming to a green light, and after that is a hill. <laughs> Richmond Hill. Just as we reach the lights, we try to slow down before going down the hill, but the brakes don't work. Huh? Well, my dad tried to pump them, but they were stuck. Oh no! So we had two options, go down the hill with no brakes, or try to turn into a flatter area and hope that the momentum stopped. So my dad pulls into a parking lot right before the hill that is luckily a little inclined. So the first thing I thought to do when we were driving with no brakes was to take my seatbelt off and get out of the bus. <laughs> and we weren't even going that fast. I could have jumped, but I, I don't know. I see now that taking my seatbelt off was not the right response, but I panicked. If you'd like to see another one of these videos, let me know what you want it to be about. And make sure you share this with your friends because this took me five hours to friggin' draw. What? Not even talking about the time it took to edit and to add the voiceover and to just finish it. Wow. So I would very much appreciate it if you sent it around. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, and uh, that little thing that kept on popping up with the color chart, I will definitely take that out next time. Don't even worry about it. The next one is going to be so much better. Okay, I'll see you next Sunday then.